Welcome to the NHL offseason, where the salary cap is finally expected to rise after the season, and many top free agents are settling for one-year deals in the hopes of a future bounty. It's been a relatively quiet one, but most GMs are trying to play Tetris with their cap flexibility, so it's understandable. But let's see how everyone's been doing. The goal of the Golden Knights was to win a cup in order to justify their all-in pushes. Well, they won. And now they can avoid the horrible fate of being the Buffalo Bills of the hockey realm. In celebration of finally performing the deed, there is a dire cup tax that needs to be paid. Ivan Barbashev and Aiden Hill were key contributors to their run, and were extended to well-deserved deals accordingly. However, the cost is great. Riley Smith, one of the original misfits, is a casualty of the cap finangling. In the honor and celebration, he shipped off to Pittsburgh. It's the hardest part of winning. The fact that you have to let pieces go. Many went through it before them, and many more will after. I'd say winning the cup is more important. But Florida, their cup opponent, fortunately didn't have to deal with a flux of pending free agents to sign. Most of them had already been locked up long term. But their punishment is having to pay the piper for their deep playoff run. Look at all the injuries they accrued. Kuchuk was just the icing on the cake. Brendan Montour needed shoulder surgery. Aaron Eckblad's glass body broke again and more. A good chunk of them might be out for the start of next season. However, there are reinforcements on the way. Oliver ekman Larson is here on a much more reasonable cap hit. Mike Riley and Nico Mikola for defensive depth. And Devin Rodriguez for the top six. To compensate, Anthony Duclair is the unfortunate cap casualty. And he's off to hockey hell in San Jose. Speaking of hockey hell, welcome to Toronto. A place where Kyle Dubas loses a power struggle to a crumbling Shanna plan. As Leafs fans everywhere mock their fallen boy wonder wherever he goes, they face a new punishment. Brad Tree living as their GM. His tenure in Calgary was... Eh. Day one of free agency had every Leafs fan wanting him fired. Every deadline acquisition gone, including O'Reilly who chose to leave instead of stay put. For acquisitions, John Klingberg and his defense for the back end, and Ryan Reeves face-punching a three-year deal. That is such a tree-living move, too. But give it another day, sign Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi, and Leafs fans are suddenly jumping back on the bandwagon. Ah, the duality of man. Same as Ilya Samsonov signing a one-year deal as they throw Matt Murray on LTIR. Wait a minute, I thought he was healthy enough to dress in the playoffs. Here's Martin Jones as punishment. The Lightning, in their efforts to try and keep the flame alive, must suffer more losses in the eternal cap crunch. Three straight cup champion Patrick Maroon and three straight cup loser Corey Perry go bye-bye. More painfully, a Ross Colton due for a payday and longtime regular Alex Kalorn are gone. The contract Kalorn got, it's probably for the best. In their place, meet Connor Sherry, who screams prototypical Lightning player who annoys us all. Same as Josh Archibald and Luke Lynn Denning for veteran bottom six presence. The real question moving forward is in Tanner Janot. Can he justify the hole given up for him, or will it just be the sunken cost fallacy? Here's a bridge contract to find out. The less I need to say about Boston, the better. They are the ultimate me. And their offseason has brought about a team completely lost at the hell. Taylor Hall traded away in a cap crunch. And their key rentals at the deadline have left. Prepare for some more rentals, though, Boston. JVR and Kevin Shattenkirk is the veteran presence to go with this team's veteran presence. Last year was humiliation, but the gang's coming back for another run. You're telling me Patrice Bergeron retired. And David Krejci sung up the skates as well, too. Shit. Well, this is a brutal situation, but they got the next best thing, Bruins fans. Milan Lucic. He's a shell of what he was, but their greatest savior's back in their darkest hour. Right? Red Wings fans have a lot of rope to give with Stevie. The Iser plan is, what's the best way to put it, gone sideways. There are flashes that there could be something interesting here, but then it's thrown in with a few odd moves. Last year was Ben Sherratt, this year is Justin Hall. On a bit of an overpay to get to the cap floor. Are you sure Kyle Dubas didn't come here? JT Comfer is a damn good get, but on a 5x5, five five, it's obvious he got paid well to do so. Your answer in net is an injury-prone James Reimer to go with an injury-prone Ville Huso? A reuniting of Sherrod and Jeff Petrie? The rest are a hodgepodge of low-key interesting buys, yet it feels frustrating. There will be stagnation. But then Iserman goes out and gets a great forward in Alex Dabrinkit at reduced price. Extends him long-term and totally redeems himself. Like the team, some consistency would be nice. What terrible luck it was to have the Dabrinkit trade blow up like that. When it was made, it was universally praised. But then he had a slumping season and didn't want to sign long-term. 
Dominic Kubalik isn't a terrible consolation prize, but there isn't much else coming in return for Debrinket. Best to settle on the UFA market to get your fill. Goaltending is a massive concern with Matt Shogard still developing. One of the best ones available is Yunus Korpisalo. Hopefully it won't predictably flop like Matt Murray did. They also nabbed Vladimir Tarasenko with plenty of gas left in the tank. With these moves, the Debrinket deal doesn't look super terrible now. Yeah, it's still rather up to Brinkett. Buffalo is in a fascinating situation for the most part. Their core could potentially make serious noise this upcoming season. No wonder why they want to sign Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power long term. A full season of Devin Levi should be excellent, but team defense needs veteran influence. Connor Clifton and Eric Johnson aren't the most inspiring buys in the world, but for a third pairing role, they should be just fine. Their key is in development, and the Sabres are on the right track. First time I've been able to say that in years. New Jersey got a taste of the glory once experienced this past postseason. Now the time has come to amplify such a claim. First acquire disgruntled Tyler Toffoli coming off a career season in Calgary at a discount. Secondly, pay Timo Meyer the big bucks. And I mean the big bucks. Third of all, make sure Jesper Brock gets a nice all of cash for his services. It's pretty steep stuff, but with the chemistry he has with Hughes, you have to. To make sure you can afford them, trade away Damon Severson and Mackenzie Blackwood, former pieces of the old future for the new one. Man, talk about a hard fall for Blackwood. It was the only reason they were relevant in 2020. He died for this team's sins, and now he must go to San Jose. But the team they humiliated, the Rangers are facing the horrors of unfulfilled expectations. Like their motto, there is apparently no quit in New York. Apparently. Bringing in Blake Wheeler and Jonathan Quick means they aren't quitting, see? Wasn't Jonathan Quick awful as a king last year? Never mind that, they need to keep at it! Nick Benino and Eric Gustafson, they're decent veteran pieces. Extending Keandre Miller to a bridge deal, that's solid too. Methinks they're relying on Shostyorkin to go far again. It's not a bad plan, to be fair. Their new coach, Peter Laviolette, should be good to get them revved up offensively, albeit probably as a short-term fix. It's the summertime, which means that Lou Lamorello is taking his customary nap instead of doing much to develop the team. This time around, they did make a stunning move. They traded away Josh Bailey in a cap dump to the Blackhawks, and gave away a second round pick to do so. Wait a minute, how foolish of me, they had more. Extending Elias Soroka into an eight-year deal is a damn good move. Plus, Semyon Varlamov is back too. It's kind of surprising considering the weak goalie market, but they did pay him well. But I have one issue with this offseason. Extending Scott Mayfield and Pierre Engvall to seven-year deals? You do realize Mayfield's 30, right? Full strategy. Sometimes I wonder if the Hurricanes have any luck whatsoever. I'd say they have terrible luck, but they did manage to extend Sebastian Ajo long-term. Free agency is the true test, though. Michael Bunting? Solid piece to get, reasonable term, and cap it for what he is. But can you explain Dmitry Orlov's deal? Eight million a year for two seasons? He's a good player, don't get me wrong, but with all the guys you need to sign? Pesci's pretty much gone with this move, you know that? Is bringing Tony D'Angelo back supposed to help ease the blow? But I don't think they're done. They did manage to nab Vladimir Tarasenko. It fell through as he fired his agency. Well, there's still Eric Carlson. Or not. But you do welcome back Jordan Stoll as your captain in the Freddie Anderson and Auntie Ranta show. They brought them both back? <laughs> Introducing the Kyle Dubas show in Pittsburgh. As all of Toronto seethes and bitches about his supposed hypocrisy, he will receive what he's truly desired. Unlimited power. His marching orders are simple. Get the gang back to the playoffs. Undo the stench of Hextall's reign. The last ride must commence. And it will begin with reforging the bottom six. Matt Nieto, Nola Chari, and Lars Eller as veteran strength. Andreas Janssen and Vinny Henestrosa as scoring depth. Ryan Graves to replace Dumoulin on the defensive front. Riley Smith acquired as a major piece for the top six picked up on the cheap. Jake Gensel suffering a severe injury during a pickup game. Wait a minute. The real question this offseason lied in net. Alex Nedeljkovic is brought in as a backup, but what about the starter? They couldn't get a seat at the table. There isn't much out there left, and the trade chips are too rich for their blood. Well, they do have Tristan Jari on speed dial. Might as well settle and sign him to a five-year deal. The mood from fandom was very uninspired by this move. That being said, it's still too quiet for them. Something else has got to be cooking. And there it is. If you wanted a way to try and get the gang one last push of glory, getting the Norris Trophy winner is a good place to start. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think Eric Carlson would be a penguin. But reality is surprisingly mild. 
There are some positives. They'll be a very entertaining team to watch next season. And in one fell swoop, Dubas got rid of nearly every single fuck-up Ron Hextall made with minimal surrender of futures. I just don't know if it really moves the needle for a team with huge questions in net. Not to mention Eric Carlson isn't the greatest advocate for defensive play. Can they stay healthy enough to make a difference? Carlson, Malkin, and Crosby playing 80-plus games in a season is as rare as Haley's Comet. Maybe those hilarious rumors of bringing back Yager will be true for all our sakes. They probably ended up the best out of them, though. Montreal freed themselves from an awful Mike Hoffman contract, and Rem Pitlick had demanded out. Casey DeSmith is a decent enough backup for them, and Jeff Petrie's been flipped home to Detroit with what Pittsburgh's retaining in the deal. It wasn't a haul like they sent for Alex Newhook, but it's something. The Habs did okay for themselves, but I'm perplexed by San Jose's outcome. You wanted to get out of Carlson's deal so badly that you took on three awful contracts and only got a protected first rounder in return? I would have retained more for better futures since the Sharks aren't doing shit soon, but that would make too much sense. Welcome to the true beginning of your rebuild. There will be no cup to catch your tears, unfortunately. As the Pens are still ramming their way towards relevance, the Capitals are just standing in the back giggling at their inevitable destruction. The only real surprise I have about their offseason is that Evgeny Kuznetsov is still here. I figured he was going to be given a one-way ticket out of town. Best ignore that. Instead, they extend Martin Farivari, trade for Joel Edmondson, and sign Max Pacioretty in one of the biggest risk-reward signings of the offseason. Will injury destroy him again like it did last season? We can ask that as we sit in stunned silence. Tom Wilson has been handed a long-term deal, giving an extremely physical forward a seven-year contract with six and a half million per year starting when he's 30. What could possibly go wrong with that? Jackets are just desperate to get back to some form of relevance. Their prospect pool is the ire of many, but last year went into a tailspin faster than nearly every player they had suffering severe injury. Team defense is in dire need of fixing. And they went after some interesting names. Damon Severson, who in and of himself managed to get his defensive reputation back after falling to the abyss. He got extended long term as well, so the bet is that'll keep it up. Also Ivan Provorov from Philly. If you've seen him play in his own end, the dude is a hot mess. Does have pedigree though, so I guess it's an okay buy. But that's not enough. Do you know what the Jackets miss? The abrasive style of torts. He's long gone, but that won't stop them from bringing in a fossil that hasn't accomplished dick in 15 years. Mike fucking Babcock. How bad of a coach was Brad Larson that team management sees this guy as an upgrade? I well, Philly, it's happening. The rebuild is underway. No, don't roll your eyes at me. This isn't one of those half-baked ones where you keep dipping your toes in the shallow end of relevance. With the way they're moving pieces, it's looking to be a long burn. Provorov's already gone. Travis Sanheim and Kevin Hayes are off to sing the blues. Wait, scratch that. Tory Krug won't wave his no Drake laws. But they don't want Hayes to come back home. St. Louis, keep him. Philly will take a novelty trinket for the pleasure of leaving him with you. They'll also gladly accept a haul of futures in the awful contract of Cal Peterson for the pleasure of moving Provorov. Tony D'Angelo and Torts worked as well as expected, and the reward for D'Angelo is getting bought out of his deal. Now what about Carter Hart? Management says he's absolutely on the table to be moved, but will somebody pony up for his talents? Or is he merely doomed to carry a rebuilding squad? Another year without the captain of your franchise. It's a damn shame, but the drums of war will never cease. The quest for another cup must continue. Ross Colton acquired from Tampa Bay. Brian Johansson from Nashville at reduced salary. Jonathan Drouin for the famous by low piece that has immense talent but can't put it together consistently. And Miles Wood, given a six year deal? But those are minor. The real prize comes in the form of a powerful re-signing. Stanley Cup champion, Jack Johnson. God bless us all. Enter the Barry Trotz era, a time when his power will shape the predators in ways never thought possible. The core has been long stale in Nashville. Trying to add on to a decaying foundation wasn't working. The time has come to overhaul it. Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson are gone. Duchesne got bought out. Johansson's having salary retained. It's the continuation of what happened at the deadline. Free agency brought in their replacements. Will Johansson bring in a true leader down the middle with Ryan O'Reilly? The down year he had, it's a massive risk. But they're betting it's more on how rough the Blues were last year. On the back end, meet Luke Shen. Had a hell of a year last year, but at that price for a third pairing D-man? But that's not the real surprise to me. They actually did it. John Hines has been let go. And instead, one of the original Predators in Andrew Brunette will be mentored by Trotz. I'm interested to see if it works. Good luck, Barry. You'll need it.
Mac Duchesne didn't have to wait too long to find a new place to work. Dallas immediately swooped him up at a massive discount to solidify their top six. The Stars didn't do a ton otherwise, but most of their core is young or locked up long term. Last year showed they're close, but can they find a way over the hump? With the youth taking the reins, there is a chance. St. Louis doesn't need to just get over the hump, but shake off the horrible stench of last season. Fortunately, they still have a young forward core, but they kind of need some big pieces to return to form. Mainly Colton Pareko and Brayden Shea. You just hope that Kevin Hayes will find a role in the middle six here. And they have a team that can bounce back, but that mostly depends on a certain goaltender. Just maybe he'll stop being an on-ice cancer and make a save this year. Will Minnesota ever find a way to win another playoff series? That is the question. What did they do in the offseason? Not much. Their cap space had them backed up against the wall. Thank the Suter and Parise buyouts for that. All they can do is deservedly extend Philip Gustafson for three years and trade for Patrick Maroon for the bottom six. So the plan, unfortunately, is to keep with the same horses and hope great form strikes them at the right time. It's not the worst option in the world, but kind of uninspiring. Just hope everyone stays healthy this time around. We all figured the time was going to come. Winnipeg was a ticking time bomb. Tension, chaos, and drama everywhere you looked. And there would be significant shedding to try and fix it. The likes of Blake Wheeler and Pierre-Luc Dubois have to go. Dubois was shipped off for a rather interesting haul of NHL regulars with upside. Wheeler just got bought out. And with his departure, it's truly the end of an era. The final holdout from their days in Atlanta is gone. The Thrashers cry in the night. However, there's no time for mourning. What happens with Hellebuck and Shifley? Both are in the final year of their contracts. Hellebuck himself has made it more than known that he doesn't want to be part of a potential rebuild, but he's still here. He may have to wait for his time, but there is much more to decide in Winnipeg. Blackhawks are undergoing a transformation thanks to the new hope of Connor Bedard. Their rebuild is going to get a jolt at the very least. They will feast at the trough of eating unwanted salary from other teams. Taylor Hall, Nick Foligno, Corey Perry, and Josh Bailey. Useful assets for either depth or draft picks. Josh Bailey was simply for the draft pick. The rest of their moves are more or less placeholders until the youth comes along and snags a key position in the Bedard era. It's just painfully ironic. Dollar Bill passes on before Kane and Taves can debut. And his son Rocky suddenly dies before Bedard makes his. It's a complicated legacy. He did get them out of the abyss and build a dynasty in Chicago. Albeit one with a black eye thanks to an event that shall go unmentioned. It's for the best. If LA's offseason had the right idea, but who they went after was the problem. Pierre-Luc Dubois and the most stunning development was not traded to Montreal. He's now a king, and has been extended to an unironically royal son. My main problem with it? They went after the wrong guy. They needed to make this trade for Hellebuck, not Dubois. LA has Kopitar, Dano, and Byfield down the middle. Dubois makes this a logjam. Otherwise, extending Vladislav Gavrikov does make some sense if he is a bit overpaid. Chucking Sean Dursey off to Hockey Hell in Arizona to free up cap works, I guess. But you can't seriously tell me that you're going to be a playoff contender with Cam Talbot, David Riddick, and Phoenix Copley as your goalie tandem. It's one of the worst in the league. Once again, they needed Hellebuck. There's still a chance to get him, but now it'll need more cap acrobatics to do. We keep hearing the same song and dance with the Oilers. Will they ever find depth, defense, and stable goaltending in the age of Connor and Leon? Such a broken record these days. More failed prospects that need to be shipped off for nothing. More cap to try and open up for new blood. That being said, welcome Connor Brown to the middle six carousel. Please, for the love of God, manage to pan out in Edmonton. Seattle will hope that Edmonton continues their path towards futility. Year two was a burst into the playoffs and they will be seeking to become true contenders this time around. Kraken know the answer is in letting their core develop, but it won't stop them from adding depth pieces. Wouldn't it be something if Kyler Yamamoto ends up becoming what he was supposed to be as an Oiler here? Vince Dunn got himself a big boy extension after a breakout season, and hoping for many more to come. Pierre Edward Belmar for bottom six punch in veteran influence. Brian Dumoulin for the back end to replace Carson Soucy. Uh, Dumoulin kind of fell off the map for good portions of the season last year. You know that, right? The players stuck in Calgary see it. Matthew Kachuk thriving in the greener pastures of anywhere else combined with how horrible last year was? It's leading to a mass exodus. I'm not joking either. Tyler Toffoli wants out. So does Noah Hannafin. And Elias Lindholm. And probably more than that. Toffoli is at least free from purgatory. The Flames got pretty much nothing for him. They had no leverage. They were lucky to even get an extended Yegor Sharangovich in a pick. 
Adding pieces? Good luck with that. The flames are hugging the cap's ceiling. Let's just say Craig Conroy and company have their work cut out for them. Hate to say it, unless Dustin Wolf becomes an instant revelation, they might be doomed. Vancouver knows all about that, thank you, Jim Benning. Speaking of Benning, one of his greatest fuck-ups is a casualty of the offseason. Oliver Ekman Larson, the great idea he fancied as an elite defenseman, has been bought out of his contract. The Canucks get to deal with that aftermath for eight whole seasons, including an almost $5 million cap hit for two years starting in 2025. Fucking hilarious. Carson Soucy will hopefully not be as much of a mess as this calamity is. Q Suter should hopefully be decent for the middle six as well. I just don't see this as the major surgery this team truly needs. As for Anaheim, well, they're just trying to get to the cap floor. Rocco Gudis will get a payday in honor of the cup tax, even if his extremely physical style could lead to a sharp decline. One other issue, did you really have to give that deal to Alex Kalorn? I get that Pat Verbeek knows him well from his time in Tampa, but this contract's probably gonna be horrible by year three. Troy Terry did get a well-deserved extension for carrying whatever this team is, but the Ducks organization as a whole is stagnant. Last year proved it. John Gibson has lost his luster. And even he's tired of dealing with the bullshit. He's formally requested a trade. I just don't know if anyone wants to pay name brand rates for a guy who hasn't been that in years. Anaheim might have to settle for less. The torture in Arizona will continue. Even more so now that the Coyotes are still trying to bash themselves through a brick wall. In the meantime, might as well get a few one-year deals to flip at the deadline. All the Jason Zuckers, Alex Kerfoots, Nick Pugstad, Sean Derzies, and Matt Dumbas they desire. I just wouldn't try to delve into the steep fall of Alex Galchenyuk. Here I am thinking this guy was going to be solid for a while back in 2017. Hope you like the KHL, buddy. As you can see, not much happening in terms of free agency. Mainly one-year deals and a few big moves, but mostly waiting and seeing what's to happen in the future. There are still plenty of big free agents out there, so there may be a move or two before the season starts. Can hockey start already?